investigation into how Freddie Gray was fatally injured in their custody. The report is in. They are not making it public. That was expected. This was not. They revealed the van that Gray was transported in. That they, they revealed that the van that Gray was transported in made an extra stop. Just one of the new developments we're going to be bringing you tonight. But I want to focus right now on what's happening in Philadelphia. Poppy Harlow is there. And Poppy, we're, we're looking at this kind of overhead view of this, this kind of uh, ebb and flow between protesters and police. Police clearly trying to push protesters back. Uh, explain how long, how big this crowd is approximately, how long it's been going on for, what you're seeing. So we've been marching, uh, reporting alongside the protesters who've been marching for the last two hours, Anderson. It has been completely peaceful until the last 15 minutes. That is when uh, the group marched down to the entrance to I-95, Interstate 95. The police had told our producer, Lawrence Crook, they can march peacefully as long as they want, but if they try to get on or block the highway, they will not be allowed on. That is exactly what you're seeing take place here. The Philadelphia police have formed a line on horses, on their bikes, on foot, and they are blocking the protesters from getting on to I-95 East. I will tell you, I had a conversation with the chief inspector of police here, and he told me this is going to be a loud, a large, but a lawful protest. These are people that need to be heard. And he said to me, the protesters are citizens, not suspects. Our job is to keep them safe while they express their First Amendment right. And that is exactly what happened throughout the afternoon. It is just in the last 15 minutes that there have been altercations, Anderson. There has been pushing. There has been screaming. I cannot say if there have been any arrests yet. We have not seen it. Um, I want to bring in, um, Poppy, I want to bring in uh, Harry Houck, formerly with the New York Police Department. Uh, Harry, as you look at, at both of these vantage points on the streets of Philadelphia, it actually doesn't look like a huge numbers of officers there, given the size of the crowd. What do you make of the police lines that you're seeing? I know. It's, uh, that was exactly what I was thinking, Anderson. Uh, it, there looks like there's probably several hundred to maybe even more than that there, and there's maybe about 50 or 60 police officers. Um, I'm hoping that they have police officers in the background in the event that they need backups to come, you know, and uh, back those officers up. But it looks like they're holding them back pretty good. But from far away, it looks like there's some tussling going on. And I know the reporter that was there said that she hasn't seen any arrests as of yet. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, Poppy Harlow, I don't know if you can see it from your vantage point. It looks like there have been a few... Uh, perhaps bottles, plastic bottles, water bottles, I'm not sure what they are, being thrown or kind of lobbed toward the police from somewhere in the crowd. I've seen maybe two or three. Uh, are you seeing that as well? So, Anderson, I've got my producer, Jaime Estepa, here with me. Jaime, you just saw a few things thrown. What did you see? I saw an empty bottle and also a big bucket being thrown both directions. I'm not sure who it's coming from. You don't, so that's important to note, Anderson, that she doesn't know who it's coming from, but there have been a few objects that have been thrown here. Interestingly, you're probably seeing that from your vantage point, I, I, about a third of the crowd here has their hands up, and that's what we've been seeing as they formed a line trying to get onto Interstate 95. Many of them put their, put their hands up after that initial uh, scuffle with police after they saw that they're not going to be allowed on the interstate. I just spoke with a young woman a few moments ago and I said, you know, why is it important for you to be right here specifically? You were allowed to march peacefully around the streets of downtown Baltimore, around City Hall, and she said, because we want to march and we are being blocked, and she feels that they should be allowed on the highway. Obviously, the police do not. Obviously, uh, they said they'll let them march, and they need to keep them safe. Uh, but clearly, the police are not going to let them go beyond this point, Anderson. I was told by the chief inspector of the police there is no curfew here tonight, and they, they can go as long as they want to go, as long as it is, as it is not violent. Harry, it's interesting because you see a number of the... the, the citizens who are next to the police have their hands up and, and, and sometimes we've seen them talking to the police as if to say, look, I'm, I'm not actually pushing, I'm not doing anything, but it seems like given the, the tight, uh, the confines of the space, even if the people in the front lines are not pushing, people in the back, if they are pushing or, or kind of surging, the people with their hands up end up in confrontation with the police. Yeah, but you know, usually in situations like this when you have so many people, all coming towards one uh, one section is not much uh, area for them to move. Uh, the police officers 
are, uh, you know, having to uh, think of the people in the front row are actually trying to start an altercation, but it's not. It's the force of the crowd. So that poli the, the police department has got to leave an area for those people to move into, away from the police officers. And, and as you can see here in the picture now, you see them moving to the left. Maybe the police officers have right. opened an area for them to be able to escape from. And that's, uh, yeah, you know, and Poppy, it looks like down. sort of they provided, an, it looks like they've kind of provided an escape valve, if you will, to allow the, 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 the group to, to continue to move on. Do you know where they're now heading? I don't. I'm walking alongside them now, but absolutely, they were sort of stuck in the same place for the last 20 minutes. Uh, now it seems part of that line of police has cleared and let them through. Again, what they're walking on now and where we're walking beside them is uh, basically a, a frontage road right next to the highway. So they have not yet entered uh, the highway. I don't think the police would let them do that. Let me just ask someone with me, excuse me, sir, do you know where you're marching right now? I know they just let you through. You were being held back before. And what's the goal? Where to go to now? Okay, he, he doesn't want to say where they're going now. Uh, let me ask one other person. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you know where you're marching right now? Uh, no. And do you know why? Did you see some of the confrontations back there? Do you know why it, 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 it got like that? It escalated because it was peaceful for two hours. They spray mace. They spray something. They spray mace and it don't make no sense. We're out here for justice. It don't make no sense not to be spraying mason trying to hit us. Don't make no sense. I don't want cameras in my face. I don't want cameras in my face. Okay, understood. They, and, and Anderson, I do want to be respectful of some of the people here don't want to be on camera, and, and they have they have that absolute right. So we're going to pull away so they're, they're not on camera right now. But I will tell you, look, I was very encouraged all afternoon seeing how peaceful, how peaceful these protests were. Uh, and then the last 20 minutes, it escalated, but I am... You know, from what I can see right now, they're continuing on what has been a largely peaceful march. Yeah, it certainly seems like kind of a cordon has been open, but the, the highway that you said that they were trying to get on, they are not getting on that highway. Is that correct, Poppy? No, I mean, absolutely not. Look, I'm not with all of them, but where I am right now is with the majority of them, and they're not trying to get on the highway anymore, as far as I can tell, Anderson, no. Okay, Poppy, I want to appreciate your efforts. We'll continue to follow this in Philadelphia. I want to go to Miguel, Miguel Marquez, who is here in Baltimore and has been uh, now for many days, as you know. Miguel, where are you? What are you seeing tonight? Okay, we are in Pennsylvania and north, about a thousand protesters from here at one point to march all the way down to City Hall and then back to here. And now they have gathered. This is the place, sort of the epicenter of it all. The place where they protested, the place where it became most violent, the place where the CBS burned down. And now it's believed, or people fear hope, that it's now a place of renewal. All four corners here are now sort of jam-packed with people from the march. People don't want to go home, and they're waiting, I guess, for the curfew again to start. Uh, there are police lined up around the way that will uh, probably eventually clear this area. Uh, and I will tell you that the information that has been leaked out there today uh, of the people in this march are not particularly happy with what they have heard uh, with regard to, to Mr. Gray and whether or not the injuries were uh, self-inflicted. They, they don't believe that, that is the case, and they, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for individuals here to believe that. Uh, they say that they will keep up these marches, clearly much more... Uh, uh, organized that we have seen in, seen in days past. They have another one planned for tomorrow. A Saturday, a big rally. Saturday should be a very big rally with lots of uh, activities as well uh, downtown at City Hall. All of this putting a lot of pressure on the government here to, to, to have that report uh, and, and come up with some charges. Freddie ain't killing Phil. And, and that's sort of the sense that you get from everybody in this neighborhood. That, Freddie ain't kill himself. That, that Mr. Gray could not have done that to himself, and that is the anger. If that is the conclusion, it's going to be a problem. Anderson? Uh, Miguel, that information, which people thought some information might come out tomorrow, clearly uh, the police let out a little bit of information today. I, I don't know what the intention was, but it certainly, I guess, takes in theory, could take some of the pressure off tomorrow, correct? I, I think it 
think that is the belief on the side of the government. I think people here, there is a great expectation that something is going to happen tomorrow, no matter how many times we say that it's not going to happen tomorrow. Uh, uh, and so I think there's a lot of concern. Well, that's, that's exactly it. This is exactly it. They don't believe that that is going to, to, to be the case. And if they don't get uh, some justice tomorrow, uh, they're going to have concerns. And, and this idea that Mr. Gray did this himself is an issue. All right, Miguel, thank you. We'll check in with you. We're on for two hours tonight. I want to go back to Poppy Harlow. You hear that guy in the background? He said the, with the evidence, Poppy, the police got that man is not getting charged. So, to be on the uh, the scene? I have to work tomorrow, so you guys better tune in. Uh, it does continue to be on the move, and here's the thing, Anderson. Earlier, the police had blocked off some of the streets, so no cars would go down, so the protesters could walk with no cars. Here's what happens when you run into, you know, traffic at the end of the workday. Uh, some of the, some of the, the, the drivers here are supporting them, honking their horn, waving at them, and some of the drivers are, are stuck here. Look, this continues to be, and I want to emphasize, a largely peaceful protest. There was a clash back there. It lasted for about 20 minutes. I could not see from my vantage point, nor have we heard from the Philadelphia police if there have been any arrests. But what has continued is a largely peaceful protest, and that is what police wanted here. This all began with a big rally of about 600 people, Anderson, at City Hall this afternoon at 4.30 p.m., uh, and, and it is continuing into the night. There is no curfew here. Police have said they'll let it go as long as it is peaceful. And from all of the protesters I've spoken with, there is no... Uh, specific end goal of where they want to end up tonight. They're just continuing to march together. Is it clear to you, uh, was this initially organized kind of over social media, as we've seen with many of the, of the protests in many of the cities uh, over the last several days? Yeah, yeah absolutely it, it is. It, it was uh, formed by a group called uh, Real. Uh, a group that was formed after, I'm told, after the events in Ferguson, Missouri. They put it out on social media. About 2,000 people were expected to, to come. I, I can't tell you if that many were here. You have better aerial vantage point uh, than we do. But it, it was absolutely organized on social media. In terms of why people are here, I think that's important to talk about on a night like tonight. Uh, why they are here, it's a number of different reasons. Uh, a woman, uh, a white woman, middle-aged, uh, Kimberly, told me she was here with her daughter because she loves this city and she feels like in this city, just like in Baltimore, there are two cities. There is such an economic uh, inequality and, and disparity and believes that opportunity is at the root of this, Anderson. And that's what's been echoed uh, to me from people of, of all ages here in this march. Poppy, I appreciate your reporting. We're going to check back in with you to see uh, how this march progresses. We're going to take a quick break. We'll also be checking back in with everyone throughout the next two hours as we head into the curfew here in Baltimore. Coming up next, the, the facts.